Continuing the series where we explore some of the lesser mentioned deities of Greek mythology, today we'll be taking a look at Iris, or as the ancient Greeks referred to her as, Iris, the goddess that many considered to be the personification of the rainbow. The role Iris played in Greek mythology was similar to that of Hermes, a messenger to the gods of Olympus. She was often seen as the handmaiden and personal messenger of the goddess Hera. Iris was the daughter of the sea god Thaumis, a descendant of Gaia and Pontus, and her mother was the Oceanid Electra. In some tales Iris was married to one of the four seasonal gods of the wind, Zephyrus, or Zephyr as we know him in English, and together they had one child, Pothus, one of the gods of love. Now there are some conflicting accounts that believe Zephyrus instead married Chloris, the goddess of flowers and greenery. To the ancient Greeks who inhabited the coastal areas, the rainbow was seen to span the entire distance between cloud and sea. They believed that Iris would carry water from the sea to replenish the clouds and thus causing rain. This in turn led to Iris also being associated with the sky and the sea, as well as the rainbow. It's believed that Iris travelled along the rainbow when she was carrying messages from the gods to mortal men, often being shown carrying a jar filled with water from the river Styx that she would give to those who were guilty of crimes, placing them into a deep slumber. In some other accounts, the jar was used to serve nectar to the gods. The depictions of Iris in ancient Greek artwork are almost identical to Hebe, but Iris was almost always seen standing beside Zeus and Hera. There are records that suggest that Iris was the twin sister of the titaness Arche, or Arche as she's known in Greek. Together they were thought to symbolise the rainbow. The two sisters were known for their use of the rainbow when carrying messages, but the easiest way to distinguish between them was their wings. Iris's wings were golden, and Arche's iridescent. The sisters were somewhat considered to be mortal enemies, with Iris being the messenger to the gods of Olympus and Arche to the Titans. During the war, they found themselves on opposite sides. Unfortunately for Arche, she came across Zeus during the war, and he tore her wings from her back, rendering her useless and severing the Titans' line of communication. Outside of being described as an errand running goddess, Iris doesn't have much distinct mythology, and doesn't feature in many stories. She was, however, one of the goddesses that was present during Leto's labour of Artemis and Apollo. It was Iris who convinced the goddess of childbirth, Ilithea, to assist Leto without the knowledge of Hera. Iris's role in Greek mythology as a messenger to the gods is one that is often overshadowed, as it was Hermes who was considered the predominant messenger to the gods, but even so, she still played a role in the war between the Titans and the Olympians. The two sisters choosing opposite sides during the war gives us quite an interesting dynamic, and we can see ultimately that Iris' choice was the correct one. It's very hard to dislike Iris, because we essentially have another deity who is more than happy just to perform their role, with minimal fuss and no drama. And after all, who doesn't like a rainbow? I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Were you familiar with Iris before today? Did you even know that a goddess of the rainbow existed in Greek mythology? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.